Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Hairbrain Games. We're going to do yet another manual transmission run to cover a game called High Frontier. Now, for those of us who don't know High Frontier, I can tell you that it is not a simple game. It's one of the more heavily weighted games, if you look on Board Game Geek, that there is to play. This is by no means a trip to the sunny, happy, peppy space park. Uh, there's nothing Disney, nothing Star Wars. High Frontier is a very complex game when you are literally building a rocket ship to the outer realms of the galaxies, and uh, well, our galaxy anyway. And in it, you have a tremendous amount of detailed information. So let's take a look at the manual for this and see, weight it against our 10 criteria, and find out how it fares. All right, first. First off, do we have a one-sentence summary of what to do and why? Well, here's the thing. Yes, we do. But this does something I've never seen before. There are five manuals. That's right. You have five different manuals and a box of Cheez-Its. So what makes this interesting? And this is a phenomenon I had heard. You literally can go sequentially through these manuals and have almost a... a like preschool to graduate level understanding by going through these over time. I love it, but to answer the question, no, it doesn't have a one sentence summary of what to do and why. It has several sentences of what to do and why. Uh, it's the same. It's not your typical, yeah. Does it have a table of contents? It has several tables of contents. <laughs> Does it have components list? Not only does it have a components list, it breaks it down into each mode of the game, which of the components actually get used for that particular portion of the game. Set up are the numbered steps to, to achieve what you want to go and do. Set up, they are actually. It does a pretty darn good job of helping with setup. It's a little bit murky in here as far as how you get to it. it. It doesn't get called out, but what it does is show you everything you need to know to get started on any of the game modes, and there are many, many game modes. All right, so how to play game flow summary. Does it go through the rounds, the turns, and the end game conditions? Yes, it does for each game mode. Uh, let's use Race for Galaxy as an example. You understand in this what to do. It actually gives you a whole tutorial of what to do. That's great. In the core game, you will know what to do. You will have player aids to help you. You will have plenty of information, call out, cutouts, sheets, ex setups, rationales, background history, everything in its place and a place for everything. Uh, does it follow a breakdown of the flow? Yes, it does. Is it precise but concise? No, it's precise, but because of the complexity, I wouldn't say it's concise. I'd say it's probably more verbose because it needs to match a very verbose and very complicated game. But you do have, I guarantee you, all the information you need to play this game are in these five little packets. Does it follow a sequential learning flow? Yes, it does. And these packets explain why. Here's what I love about it. I'm gonna wait till the end to explain what I love about it, but yes, you have a sequential, not only do you have a sequential learning flow, you have a sequential teaching flow uh, where you are taught basics, very easy, generally easy, full game, total carnage, I like it. All in these handy dandy manuals, everything for, spread across, but everything you need to know is in this manual. So if there's duplication, for example, if these rules, these rules don't all rely on you having to read this and then go back and distill down. Everything you need to know in here is in here. Follow a sequential learning flow. We went through that. Consistent phrasing and terminology. This has one of the best. Uh, I, this is a, a monumental achievement of consistency in phrasing and terminology. Every step has been taken. This is a game many times more complex than your average standard Euro game, general game, whatever. And they have stayed consistent with their phrasing, terminology, cross-referencing, terms used prior to their being used, terms explained by their being used. Oh my gosh. Examples of substance... Everywhere you have an example, it is filled with a substance of what you're going to run into. There are no cop-outs. By that I mean, 
when someone uses an example and they just take the most simple example of a gameplay rule or flow uh, that really doesn't do anything except just reiterate what was on the side. I like examples when they say, hey, here's a real world example. Well, maybe a couple things are a little different than, than the standard simplest version. And so it helps to kind of teach uh, not only the concept, but maybe variations of a concept of a gameplay. And this does it 100% well. Uh, and then finally, turn summary, quick view, player aids. This box is filled with player aids. You've got a full comprehensive player aid for every single game mode. And finally, variants, solo, two player. Do they clearly express the differences? Oh, do they ever. Whenever you need to know, and hey, let's look at the appendix because it has many variations. Gives you everything you need to know, the variations, what special rules exist, if it's solo, based on number of players, like so many scenarios, and I'm starting to get into gameplay here, but just suffice to say, you have everything you need. And then, bonus, does it have an index of terms and cross-references to terms in line? Yes, it does. Does it have longhand gameplay examples? It has a, a, a mausoleum filled with gameplay examples. Does it have large enough fonts for the aging eyes? Absolutely not. <laughs> this was a tricky one. Glossy pages and smaller text are really rough for me. I forgive it because it is trying so hard to give you everything you could possibly ever want to know to play this game. And to do it in at least some, without having to provide a foot thick worth of manual. Uh, and so I understand it, but you can tell for people with eyes that, that hurt, uh, you know, this, you're definitely going to want to try and get, oh my gosh, a PDF something, um, because it, it can be, get it, get some magnifying glasses. I had to. So that's the one thing I would say that is a, I'd almost say it's a necessary evil because of all of the wealth of information they provide, but it's fair to point it out. Strategy tips. Oh yeah. There's a whole bunch of strategy tips. There's strategy tips in every single one of these variations. And there's a full strategy section in the appendix. Not only is there a full appendix, like it's just not only that, this appendix here covers every single one of the cards, all the technologies. It goes into incredible detail. If you ever wanted to know some quasi-plausibilities of future space science and technology, like, you're not going to find a better avenue than this game. This game, it's, it's astounding how much this game puts together. A QA, and a a fact, strategy guides, information on each thing that you're doing. Amazing. Designer's notes and insights. Yep. Historical context and details. Well, this isn't history. This is a, uh, this is a, think, uh, think the expanse as far as trying to be at least somewhat realistic with how space travel is going to work out. And yes, the details are legion. Not a pizza box size manual. Nope. This is I love. This is I think my favorite size of a of a manual. I think it is. I like the thick pages. I like that it's I could put it to the side of a game. I don't have to have it take up the entire box width really really good now i'm going to go over a couple other things that give it really big points first off if you're starting out from this you literally what game comes with a read me first and this isn't just oh here don't worry it'll be fine this is serious don't panic very funny any douglas adams reference automatically gets extra points explains the game here explains what's going on this explains to this has a handy chart for anybody who's ever played this game or not played this game you literally look and go here am i here's where i start oh here am i here's where i start these books whatever and it goes through every single thing components list everything you need to know and broken down into subcategories simple fact do I need to read the core rule book? Not a way. What else is available? Oh, here's a tabletop segment. Whatever. How to use the modules. Things in blue. Callouts for things in blue that are optional depending on your gameplay. Changes from the people that knew before. Map changes from previous versions. A whole set. Look at that. Then we go into Space Diamonds. This is the simplest game. This is the, the babysitter's game. This is the, I'm just starting out. And here's it. There's two modes. The super simple mode and the simple mode. Look at this. Everywhere that you see blue, if you're playing the super simple mode, you can ignore it. You don't have to look at the text even to find out whether or not it applies. You just simply go, if it's blue, well, punt on it. I'll just start with a simple version. This is brilliant, except for colorblind people. Because you literally are going in and going, okay, don't need to worry about that. Oh, don't need to worry about that. You don't even have to go. It just saves on the, if you're playing this variant and not that variant, do this. No, it's just blue. Blue is, yeah, blue, blue, forget it. 
and then every synth sequence of play, explaining concepts, starting very small and building out, because it looks daunting when you first pick it out. And again, if I'm playing the simple mode, I don't have to worry about much of this at all. Then I graduate and go, you know what, now I'm going to play the list simple mode, so now I bring the blue in. Race for Glory is sort of the streamlined version of the game. Again, a full and complete tutorial. And here's the other cool thing. As you're playing through this tutorial, because it takes maybe 15, 20 pages, game state. Sometimes people will put screenshots and go, well, your board should look like this at the end of this time. Not so here. Here, there's literally a situational table legend. As you're playing through this, you're going to look and go, okay, here's the board state. I, in about 10 seconds, I can make sure that as I'm going through this tutorial, because I'm trying to learn, that everything that is in its place and everything is accounted for. Okay, I go a little farther, I learn a little bit, did I make any mistakes, am I getting off track? I don't know. Oh wait, I don't have to worry about it because now I can check again. There's the end of the, at the end of year four, here's the situation you could see. Oh, that's great. Oh look, it's in, end of this year, end of this year. You literally have these checkpoints. They're almost like, yeah, literally like video game checkpoints that say, okay, here's where you are. If I needed to set the game up and come back to it later because that's a possibility in a game of this scope i can do that charts every single chart is covered and handled the footnotes are incredible what's the difference between a cycler why do we have this cycler thing what does it mean to me the satisfied viewer how do we decode this fuel strip because it's a little complex this game so much anticipates everybody's questions of someone jumping in with vanilla eyes it anticipates everything someone coming in having played one two and three would want to know as far as the differences everything is in its place and there is a place for everything it is the most brilliant way to approach a very complex game i have ever seen there are not enough pluses to put at the end of the a that i give high frontier for all for all of the work in detail clearly years and years of experience years and years of feedback years and years of refinement have made this the best on-ramp to a highly complex game i have ever seen good job high frontier and we'll see you next time on harebrain games